And the Lord appeared unto Isaac and said, Dwell in this land, and I will be with you and bless you. For to you and your descendants I give all these lands, and I will perform the oath which I swore to your father Abraham. And I will make your descendants multiply as the stars of heaven, and in your seed all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. Sons of Promise Isaac and Jacob. Shalom and welcome to our program. I'm Miles Weiss. And I'm Catherine Weiss. And we are so excited today to bring you a new series, The Sons of Promise, Isaac and Jacob. This is really about the faithfulness of God. Isn't and God's it? continuing His Word, with His spoken word that he spoke yes. to Abraham, he made him a promise that he would give him a land and that his descendants would have the same land. We're seeing that promise made alive today because not only did he promise it, but yes. he's a covenant keeping God yes. and he reestablishes it through Isaac and Jacob. And it's so important, especially in the day in which right. we're living, that we recognize the covenant line comes through Isaac and Jacob. Right. There is a blessing to Ishmael, right. there's a blessing to Esau if they take it, if they want it, mm -hmm. but the covenant line is through Isaac and Jacob. And we really see that in this story. You're going to see in these eight programs and in a really beautiful playing out through the drama from the Bible and also a look into modern Israel. That's right. So that we can see how this, this promise is not only to the Jews, it's through the Jews. Mm -hmm. And because of that, it comes to you. It comes to whosoever will through the Jews. Because Yeshua said in Matthew 22, that God is the God of the living, not of the dead. That's right. And so even today, He's the God of the Jewish people and to whosoever would be grafted in to the commonwealth of Israel. Mm -hmm. This is really a story about door to door, mm. generation to generation. Mm. And so let's go to our drama now as the biblical story unfolds with Abraham sending his servant out to find a wife for his son Isaac. And Abraham sent his servant to the land of his brother Nahor to find a wife for his son Isaac. The story of Isaac and Jacob, the sons of promise, really begins with Father Abraham back in Genesis 12. God says to Abraham, Lech Lecha, get up and go. And he calls him out of the life that he knew into a new life and a new land. We're standing here in Jaffa looking at modern Tel Aviv, a miracle of the fulfillment of God's promises. Yeah, God is a God of promises. He's a God of love, and He has a plan for each and every one of us. You know, you see in the life of Abraham, Abraham was a man of altars, and Isaac was a man of wells, and we're going to see how Jacob is a man of tents, a peaceful man, that God extends His covenant plan, and the nation of Israel is birthed through the line of Jacob. Yes, and that's important because there's such controversy today in the world about this little country, smaller than New Jersey and yet a covenant land. So in this series we're going to look at God's fulfillment of His covenant promises. We want to notice how in the scripture, if you take them together, you can see that God promised in Jeremiah 16 that He would no longer be known as the God who brought us up out of Egypt, but as the God who brought us from the north, the south, the east, and the west. Amos 9.15 says when we come back into the land this time, we will never be uprooted again. 
In Isaiah 66, verse 8, ask the question, can a nation be born in a day? And that's exactly what happened. May 14th, 1948, this nation was born, and God intends to keep it here as a witness of who he is until the coming of Messiah. That's the season that we're in right now. So this story begins with a well, and it really tells the story of how Isaac, a man of wells, is going to be the line through which the promises will come to the entire world. One of the things we'll see in this series is how God has blessed us, not only with Messiah, but also with incredible blessings in technology and medicine and physics, sciences, through the Jewish people, through this small group of people, God has brought untold blessing to the earth. Our story will continue when we return from this. For insightful perspectives on Israel and Bible prophecy, ask for our free monthly newsletter, The Levitt Letter. At levitt.com you can read the newsletter, watch the TV program, or visit our online store. Stay current with us on social media via Facebook and Twitter. Come with us on a tour of Israel or Petra, or a cruise to Greece and Ephesus. Please contact us for more information. יש עמנו די אוכל לגמליך, וגם מקום לך ללון בו. ברוך השם אלוקי אברהם, אדוני, אשר עשה עמי חסד והובילני אל בית אחיו. נלך. drama unfolds around a well, and we see that over and over again in the story of Isaac. Just as Catherine said in the earlier segment, that Isaac is a man of wells, and we're going to see how God uses that picture to speak to us about who he is and about the living water that he brings to whosoever will ask. You know, there's such a parallel between Isaac and Yeshua, between Isaac and Jesus as a promised son. He really is, Isaac, is really a picture of the Messiah. We've seen that in the story of Abraham, and now we're going to see it unfold, beginning with this section where the bride is being chosen for him, just as you've been chosen by God as a bride for Yeshua. Look at the parallels here. There was a promised seed and a promised son for both Isaac and for Yeshua, there was a promise that Messiah would come. We see the promise in Isaiah 9 that unto us a son is given, and we see that in the promise of, of Isaac, that Abraham and Sarah were beyond hope, and yet God said, I'm going to do this. Look at the time in between, the interval between the promise and the fulfillment. There's a very lengthy interval in between those two. Abraham and Sarah waited a long time for their son to be born, and so it is with the Messiah. In fact, Galatians, Paul says that when the fullness of time has come, God sent forth his son. There was a time gap in between. Another parallel, both Sarah and Mary, Miriam, asked, how can this be? How is it possible? Sarah laughed. Miriam, Mary, asked, how could this be? Yet, nevertheless, at your word, so be it. And they both asked the question of God, is it possible that I would have been chosen for such a thing as this, to bring forth a son? And they were both named before their birth. Isaac was called Yitzchak, laughter, before he was born, and Yeshua was called 
salvation, Yeshua, before he was born because he would bring salvation to his people. They both had miracle births. There was no way for Abraham and Sarah to have a child, and there is no way in the natural for Mary to have a child without a natural father. It was a supernatural birth in both cases. And finally, they both had a very specific, unique relationship to their father. For Abraham and Isaac, it was that fulfillment of the waiting for a promised son, a son of covenant. And for Yeshua, it was hearing the sound coming at the time of his baptism when the heavens opened and the dove landed on him and he heard the voice of his father say, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. We're going to see over and over again in this story how God is speaking about the story of redemption through the life of Isaac and then through the life of Jacob. We'll be back after this. Your financial contributions to Zolid Levitt Ministries enable us to bring you our weekly television series, our monthly newsletter, and our website. But you may not know your gifts of funds also support other ministries that share the gospel here and in Israel through our To the Jew First Fund, Aiton Shishkoff, our man in Haifa, and the Good News Fund. We welcome your donations to Zola Levitt Ministries as we serve together until our Messiah returns. Israel is a land of covenant. It's a land where when you go, and we'd love you to come with us, the Bible will come alive and in, in a whole new realm to you. You'll be walking where Jesus walked. You'll be seeing the places that he talked about that you've read about, and you'll be participating in something that's life changing. So we just would love you to join us. Miles and I would love to host you. That's right. We, we never get tired of going to Israel. You know, really a good way to stay in touch with what we're doing here at the ministry is through our newsletter. If you are not currently receiving our newsletter, please call us, go to 1-800-WONDERS or go online to levitt.com and get in touch with us. This is an up-to-date magazine about what's happening in Israel mm -hmm. and really has incredible information for you to push back against the disinformation that's currently being pitched by the ma mainstream media. And also our resource this week is a beautiful new poster. It's a genealogy chart that talks and shows you the sons of promise. It shows the lineage of Isaac and Jacob through Abraham and leaves room in this very chart for you to plug in your family members, to right. put in members who have come to faith or those that you're right. praying for so that you really are participating with the, the commonwealth of Israel and also being grafted in to the well, so many places in the New Testament, God yes. says, I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's and right. he calls the woman that was oppressed, where is my daughter Abraham? Or yes. Even, you know, just so many places where God wants us to know that we are part of the, the covenant keeping plan that he has it's for this exactly earth. exactly right. And this is really the family chart yeah. for all of us. So we want to encourage you to get in touch with us, to receive one of those. It'll bless you. It'll bless your family. It makes a beautiful gift. Also, we want to return now to our story. You know, this covenant story is just a, really the story of the, the God of the Bible. It's really right. about His faithfulness. Mm -hmm. There are heroes and villains in the story. There's drama in the story. But it really does demonstrate that the hero of the Bible is God Himself. So now let's return to the biblical drama that comes from Genesis. And Abraham's servant spent the night in the home of Abraham's brother, Nahor. He told the family about the reason for coming and how the Lord had led him to this very place to find a wife for Isaac. The God of his master Abraham had been faithful, for the family had agreed to the terms saying, this thing was from the Lord.
התנ״ך לרבקה להישאר עמנו זמן מה בטרם תצא למסע? לא, לא נוכל להישאר. השם ברך אותנו עד כה. תן לי אתה לשוב אל אדוני. רבקה, את יוצאי לצאת עם איש זה עכשיו? כן, אני אלך. Abraham sends his servant out to find Isaac a bride, and it is God's plan that we pray, and we'll see in the servant how fast God answers his prayer. Before he even begins finishing praying, he sees Rebecca coming, and Rebecca is willing, and she says yes right away. It's such a picture for us of how to be a servant, of how to be willing to go the extra mile. He comes with 10 camels and so many other gifts to give to her, but he's looking to see her heart, if it's a servant's heart, if it's the right one for Isaac, and, he, and she passes the test by being a servant. It's such a beautiful picture for us. It really is, and really he comes with the bride price, and Rebecca says yes, and that's really the picture that we see here. You know, it's a real interplay between between the modern and the ancient realities. We're sitting here in modern Tel Aviv, looking at the incredible thing that God has done in rebuilding this nation. And yet, this ancient story really tells the story of what goes on for us when we say yes to Messiah. There's a, we, you know, sometimes when we're in the hotels, we'll see young Orthodox kids courting with one another right. in the hotels, and they'll, they'll meet together, and they'll talk with one another. The marriage has been arranged, but there's an, always a human element. They have to say yes. I remember years ago, I was setting up a meeting in, in northern India, and a young pastor was about to have his first child in another city. His wife and him were married only five years, and I asked him, Asher, what is an arranged marriage like today? Because in India, they still do that. And he said, when we first met, we were six years old, and we didn't see each other again until the day of our wedding. We were married in a typically Indian, lavish wedding, and for the first month, all we could consider was suicide. We were living with a stranger. We didn't know how to live. And then something happened. He said, Miles, we threw ourselves on the floor of our flat and we cried out to God and He gave us love for one another. He gave us supernatural love for one another. And that taught me something, that there's always an element for us to say yes, just as we see Rebecca right. saying yes to the servant of Abraham to marry Isaac. We have to say yes when Messiah comes and knocks on the door of our heart. And so that's our prayer for you today, that when you hear that call, that you'll say yes to the Messiah and become the bride, just as Rebecca became the bride of Isaac, a type of Messiah, you and I can become the bride of Mashiach himself. Rebecca really is an example for us of what it means to be God's bride. You know, she went the extra mile. She not only did she willingly give a stranger a drink, but she offered to give the camels a drink too. And that was not a small task. Those were 10 very thirsty camels. When you see in scripture, 10 is always testing. And she passed the test of wanting to be that servant that God is calling all of us to be. We step into our destiny through service, and she certainly did. That's a good word. You know, speaking of servants, we had the incredible privilege right. of interviewing Jan Willem van der Hoven. He is a disciple of Cory ten Boom. Wow. You may know her story from The Hiding Place. Mm -hmm. And he has been standing with Israel as a Gentile, standing with Israel for over 40 years. And it mm -hmm. was an absolute honor for us to be with him uh, in the uh, up on near the Temple Mount and be able to interview right. him in Israel and just to be able to hear his passion for the things of God and his passion that the nations mm -hmm. would stand with Israel. It was so encouraging for me personally and it's a privilege for us to have him on our program. And so let's, without any further delay, let's go to my interview with Jan Willem van der Hoven. Jan Willem, you've been in Israel for over 40 years. How did your love affair with the Jewish people in Israel begin? First of all, just nice to be on your program. Thank you. And as I've already done, I bless you. Thank and I you. hope that the people will support uh, what you're doing 
and your ministry because I believe the voice for Israel is one of the most important voices to save uh, our nations. And uh, I was influenced, among others, by Corrie ten Boom, who lived in Harlem, where I grew up. Uh, the Americans know her from the Hiding Place film that Billy Graham made. And of course, the Bible is extremely clear yes. um, about the importance that um, Israel has, especially in the end time. I think, for instance, of Jeremiah 30, verse 10 and 11. Mm. When I bring Jacob back, though I make a full end with all the nations mm. where I scattered her, I will not make a full end of Israel. And you see the collapse of nations, Europe, where I come from, uh, economically and uh, infiltrated by the powers of Islam, decadent. Um, it's not anymore a Christian Europe, it's a hedonistic Europe. And America will go that same way if this message that you represent and a few others, uh, I wish I could say many others, um, will not be heard because the Bible says in Isaiah 60 verse 12, the nation that shall not serve Israel shall perish. And Mordecai said to Esther, if you keep quiet, now I speak to every Christian, whether they are Jewish believers or Gentile believers in America, if you keep silent now, God's plan with Israel will go on, but you and your house and your family and your church will uh, face or have to face the consequences. Give her respite, Lord, give her respite. You have used America to free Europe. Yes. You have used America for 80% of all evangelism. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Lauren Cunningham is an American. George Ferber is of Operation Mobilization is an American. Yes. Uh, Billy Graham is an American. Uh, I thank God as a European. I'm not critical of America, but I, I'm wounded in, in my heart to see how America is throwing away mm. what made her big. When America stood beside Israel, yes. God used America. I think you can get a sense of the passion and the fervency with which Jan Willem van der Hoven speaks and how he stands for the things that matter for God. You know, we couldn't get all of the interview right. that we did with him uh, on this program. So if you want to see the rest of it, please go to our website, go to levitt.com and you'll see the entire interview. He really does get uh, just so excited and passionate about- There's impartation to pray for um, Israel through exactly, his ministry. Exactly, he'll call you up to intercede for Israel and to really stand for the Lord. It's a one, he's a wonderful man. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to go and um, show some of the benevolent funds that we support through Zola Levitt Ministry, yeah. Bridges for Peace. Yes. They help Holocaust survivors, yes. they help the IDF, yeah. and really they've been there in the land for 40 years or yeah. more, yes. um, build, building that bridge between Jews and Christians. Exactly right. You know, Mark Levitt on this series, you're going to see a number of times when Mark Levitt is interviewing some of the benevolence funds that we support. You, I don't know if you know this, but our, your funds to this ministry not only go to produce these programs, but we also are constantly supporting different ministries and different benevolence funds in Israel. So now let's go to Mark Levitt interviewing Bridges for Peace. What makes Bridges for Peace unique among ministries in Israel? Well, I think that uh, what makes us unique is our vision, and that is we have a vision of changing the attitudes of Christians and Jews toward one another. In fact, the fact that we're based in Jerusalem is also very, very special. You know, a lot of ministries are based in their own country, wherever that might be in the world, and they're telling what, what God believes about Israel and so on. But we're actually here with 70 people on the ground who are showing God's love to the Jewish people. And most Jewish people, most Israelis have a, have a huge memory of the Holocaust and to our great sadness they believe that Christians caused most of their pain throughout the centuries. So we're here as Christians on the ground uh, from all over the world. We have Christians from 15 different countries on our staff. And we're here to show that, that we love them as Christians. We love the Jewish people, that we believe God has a plan and a purpose for their lives, that we believe God is bringing them back from the nations, and that we will do everything we can to cooperate with God's plans. Wonderful. Now, I understand that Bridges for Peace is a multifaceted outreach that helps old people, children, immigrants, 
many different sorts of people. What impact would you say Bridges for Peace has had here? Oh, it's, it's quite significant. Actually, uh, at the current time, about 28,000 people in Israel are receiving food that's given from Christians, Christian money, given to them um, all over Israel. 52 different communities. We work with 18 different municipalities. Uh, and I would guess uh, that probably 60% of our recipients are children. So, uh, and of course, a lot of elderly people as well. Um, I'm sure you're aware of the fact that Israel has a huge number of immigrants. In fact, about three million of the population came here as immigrants. And uh, we're helping a lot of them. So we help immigrants, people who are just landing in the, in the land and don't know where they're going to have their next food. And, and we help orphanages. So huge reach. In fact, so much that we're recognized by the Knesset and by the foreign ministry and by various parts of the government as being a significant help. Uh, to the social economic needs of this country. Speaking of Sons of Promise, I don't know if you're familiar with Mark Levitt. He is the executive director of our ministry and Zola's son. So to see him interviewing Bridges for Wonderful. Peace is really kind of nice. And you know, that ministry is so profound. They, they distribute 70 tons of food per month in Israel, and they mm -hmm. serve 300 hot meals a day wow. to children in Israel, those wow. without. So it's really a wonderful work, and we get to be part of supporting them. And it's so needful this yes. time. Yeah. It really yeah. is. So we want to uh, encourage you to join us again next week. We're going to continue with the Sons of Promise and see how God is alive today. And until we see you, remember, Sha'alu Shalom Yerushalayim. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Our resource on this program, The Promised Seed of Abraham Lineage Chart. In appreciation for your donation of $20 or more, we'll send you this beautiful original artwork showing an overview of the family tree of Jesus, beginning with Abraham. This work of art is suitable for framing and also includes space for you to add your own names to the family tree. Call 1-800-WONDERS and ask for the lineage chart or visit us at levitt.com. Our monthly newsletter, The Levitt Letter, is free and full of insightful articles and news commentary from a messianic perspective. Visit levitt.com to find our newsletter along with current and past programs, our television schedule, and much more. Your donations to Zola Levitt Ministries help these organizations bless Israel. Please remember, Zola Levitt Ministries depends on tax-deductible donations from viewers like you. This has been a paid program brought to you by Zola Levitt Ministries.